Hey, what's up, everybody? Today we're looking at the 2022 The Rise and Reign of the Mammals, A New History from the Shadow of the Dinosaurs to Us by Steve Brusati. Steve Brusati is a paleontologist who specializes in carnivorous dinosaurs. In fact, I believe The Rise and Reign of the Mammals is his first book that isn't specifically about dinosaurs. I read, reviewed, and loved The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs, which came out in 2018, link in the description, and The Rise and Reign of the Mammals is like a sequel to that book. As much as I loved The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs, I did have some criticisms to share on it. I do sometimes try to include a little criticism on the books that I really liked as kind of a way to, of building trust. I don't want you to just think that I'll only tell you the good things that I liked about a book. But anyway, the reason I'm telling you this is because The Rise and Reign of the Mammals fixes the things that I didn't really like about his last book. I'm talking about the liberal use of cliches and just overall less mature writing. The Rise and Reign of the Mammals is like the mature older sibling of The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs, even though it's not older, it's newer. But I want to stress that this does not mean that this book is in any way boring. It's not. Something I really love in science or nature writing is when you feel the author's enthusiasm and his love for the material. And when an author does this well, I just find that it makes the book so much more enjoyable. It's just like if you've ever had a teacher that has the ability to enthuse you in the classroom like that. Especially with Brusati's excellent descriptive writing, you sometimes feel like you're involved with the narrative. Speaking of narrative, let's talk about the format and the structure. The Rise and Reign of the Mammals is a book about evolution, recovering from the common ancestor of reptiles and mammals, and following the mammal line all the way up to modern day Homo sapiens. We stop and talk about dozens of different animals along the way while introducing evolution-related topics like selection pressures, adaptation, changing environments, and speciation and extinction. Brusati goes into detail on some of the traits that made mammals different from their predecessors, as well as some of the things that made them special, be it special sensory abilities, or their carnivorous prowess, or just their sheer size. This book has kind of a Steve Irwin feel to it at times, but in Brusati's own brand. We progress through the book, focusing on individual body parts, especially the ones that make mammals mammals. That's the key to this book's layout, whereas most books like this are almost purely historical in presentation, this one also takes the reader on a morphological journey. We talk about the evolution of the spine, the ears and the jaw bones, which are linked in a very fascinating way, and the teeth, the eyes, the brain, the placenta and the mammary glands, the tails, the hands, the feet, the hips, and more. Brusati uses a mix between teaching style presentation and storytelling. He may take you through a scenario where events play out millions of years ago to explain something like how allopatric speciation can happen, and he does this in a very rich descriptive writing style. He even does this for a future scenario on one occasion. He's very good at painting a scene for the reader to feel immersed in. This is something he did so well in his last book, too. This is where you're really pulled into what's going on. And I think this is just such a great and memorable way to explain concepts like speciation. He'll also do this for describing some of the work that he and his fellow scientists do and have done. And again, I felt that Brusati is really coming into his own as a writer with this book. You feel how he's maturing, both as a writer and as a person, Another fascinating thing about this book is just the sheer amount of different amazing creatures that he talks about. Make sure you have your phone close by because you're going to want to stop and Google all of the extinct creatures that he talks about. I also appreciate how Brusati will pause just to share how amazed he is by certain facts. Like, for instance, he reflects on the fact that out of the billions of years of life on this planet... We, who are alive right now, have the privilege of sharing the earth with the largest creature ever to have lived, as far as we know, who, by the way, is a mammal. This book has plenty of interesting facts like this. 
One thing I noticed that I didn't get was in the beginning of the book, there's this timeline with major events written on it. And at, at the 10,000 year mark, it says first Homo sapiens. But we've been around a lot longer than 10,000 years, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. But that was the only thing I saw that really seemed off. Finally, like the rise and fall of the dinosaurs, this book features superb artwork by Todd Marshall, as well as some more simple anatomic illustrations by Sarah Shelley, and lots of really cool photos. They really put a lot of effort into making this book a great visual experience to go with the narrative. I mean, just look at that cover. And at the end of the video, which is right about now, I'll show you some shots of Marshall's artwork. Okay, that's it for this one, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I think this is really a book that just about anyone would enjoy, whether you're 90 or 9. I wish I had Brusati's books when I was a kid. If you're interested in the natural world, animals, animal documentaries, and things like that, or if you enjoyed The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs, you'll want to check out The Rise and Reign of the Mammals by Stephen Brusati. Oh, look at that one. You want to see something really ugly? Alright, thanks for watching, guys. Hope to see you on the next one.